Hey guys, what's going on? This is your friendly neighborhood Mant here, and today we're going to be going on another amazing adventure in AppleScript. So today I'm going to be talking about functions, which are more commonly known as handlers in AppleScript, and uh, variable scope. So what functions allow you to do is basically to call a sequence of instructions repeatedly in your code without having to actually you know, copy and paste that specific sequence every single time. So uh, I'm probably going to be making another part to this, but this is just going to be the basic stuff. And I think really the best way to explain what a function is, is to actually get into making one. So I have a blank app script file here, and at the top I'm going to define a function. So we do that by doing on, and then our function name. And I'm just going to call my function, function name. You can use anything you want, but I like this generic example. And then we have curly, uh, not curly braces, parentheses. And in between these, we can pass in parameters, but I'll touch on that later. So after we have this, we go down, and we have n, and then our function name again. So I called my function function name, so n function name. And what we have right here is a basic function or handler block. And in between here, I'm just going to have something. So display dialog uh, dialog. So we can call this chunk of code repeatedly in our program. So if we run our program, even though it compiles, nothing happens. Well, that's because we didn't actually call our function. So we call our function just by uh, typing our function name. So I named mine function name right here, and then the parentheses. So now uh, this will actually call this block of code right here, and we should get a dialog. So if we run this, we get a dialog. Good, everything's working. So this is a really basic function, you know, that can't really do much if we just call the same block of code every single time. So let's add some flavor to it with a parameter. So we do this between our curly brackets, and I'm going to call my parameter param1. So now we must pass this in this parameter in. So if we don't, we get an error. So, uh, you know, just you have to pass in the parameter to find here. So we do that by you know going to our matching function and just between the curly brackets I'm gonna pass in the parameter uh, param1 is a string so if we run this we still get a, a dialog box with dialog and that's because we're still executing this single line of code even though we're not acting on this parameter so I'm gonna take this parameter and it's I guess thing to me is defined as a variable in this function, and we can pass it in here. So we pass in the parameter here to the dialog box. So we f call this function, we give it the string param1, it goes up here, and then param1 right here is set to this string. So let's run this, and we get a dialog box with param1. And if we change this, we can change this to a different string or whatever you want, and we should still get it to show up in this dialog box. So we can pass in more than one parameter, and so I'm going to pass another one, param2. You don't have to use these names, but I uh, just like generic ones for this example. So um, I'm going to so I'll pass in a number for this one, so 43. And then down here we can do so. I'm going to set a variable, so set um, var to param2 plus 10. Okay, so I'm going to take whatever number we pass in here and I'm going to add 10 to it. And then I'm going to split it out in a dialog box, action, param1, and this is concatenation. So I'm just going to add a space here, space, and, per, and var. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a string, a number. We're going to add the, uh, 10 to the number and set it to variable var. And they're going to display a dialog box with the string, a space right here, and the number. So if we run this, a different string and our number, 53. So 43 plus 10 is 53. So everything is working correctly. So functions, uh, they can return a value. So I guess the best way to really explain that is to demonstrate it. So we do that using the return keyword. I'm just going to get rid of this right here and get rid of these. So I only want one parameter. So I'm going to say, so set, we're going to set a new variable, so set var to param1 plus 10 again. 
And I guess I'll change the name of this to better reflect what this function does. So on, so I'm going to name this function on uh, add 10, and then I need to change the corresponding end block right here. So in add 10. So what this function will do is just add 10 to a number provided. So after this, we can return param1. Not param1, sorry, var. So we just return the value if we did that, but we're going to return var, which is at the param1 plus 10. So if we call this function down here, so I'm going to add 10 to 10, there we go, we should get back 20. So if we run this, we get nothing. Well, that's because we haven't done anything with the return value. So we can just do display dialog add 10, and we get 20. So what this does is we call the add 10 function to find up here, pass in 10. We set variable to 10 plus 10, so 20, and then we return 20. Now this 20, this value of 20 is fed back to here, and then it is fed into the display dialog. I guess that can also be considered a handler. So we feed this back here, and then we display dialog with a value of 20. So functions have a wide, wide array of uses, and I'm sure there are many that you can think of, but it's mainly used for uh, getting blocks of code that you, know, you uh, would repeat in your program and just putting it in a function so you don't have to copy and paste that block every single time. So now I'm going to move on to the topic of variable scope. And I guess there are three kinds of variables in AppScript and pretty much every other programming language. There are local variables, global variables, and just general external variables. So what variable scope is basically how these variables can be accessed in different contexts. And really the best way to explain it is just with uh, an experiment. So I'm going to get rid of everything right here and I'm going to define a simple function. So just generic function name and let's end that. I'm going to define a variable in this function block, so set var to this is a variable exclamation point to say it with feeling. And then I'm going to call this function and I'm going to try to access this variable that's set inside this function. So display dialog var. Now what should happen is we should see this is a variable in a, in a dialog box. So if you run this, we see the variable var is not defined. Well, that's because this variable is a local variable, and it's defined only in this function block. So if we try to access it inside of the function, we can't. So this kind of works in reverse, so I guess let's take this outside of the function, and try and display it inside of the function. And if we run this, function, there we go, the variable var is not defined. Well, that's because it's defined as an external variable, and since it isn't passed in as a parameter of this function, we can't access it inside this function. Now, this can make for uh, some interesting code, so what we can do is, I'm just gonna pull this out again, cut it, and define variable inside this function. I'm gonna call the function, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down here, and define the variable again, so something like potato pie, and then I'm going to display a dialog box with that variable. Now let's see what happens. So we get this is a variable, which is this value right here. And then we get potato pie, which is this value right here. Now that's because we call this function, we set variable, it's a local variable in this function, and we display it. Now once this function is over, the variable is pretty much just gone. You, know, you can't access it, you, know, you can't access that side of the function anyways. So this is set in the local scope, and then we set variable in the external scope, and we access the external variable var because there's no other var out there. So there's one other variable scope, which is called global, and that means the variable can be accessed anywhere. So I'm just going to get rid of this right here. Actually, no, I'm going to do that. I want to take this, I'm going to cut that, get rid of this, clean that up. I'm going to find the variable up here to potato pie. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of this inside the function. So with the global keyword, let's do global var, we can access variables outside of the function. So let's just run this. And we don't get an error, we get a dialog box with potato pie. So everything's working. So what this is doing is we define the variable outside of the function. 
And then this function uh, right here, we scope over this, it's just the function definition. And then we actually call the function here. Now right here we say we want to access, be able to access var as a global variable. So we can access var defined outside of the function right here. And then we display dialog var, we just access this variable right here. So I guess a quick recap, there are three different variable scopes, local, external, and global. Local variables are defined in functions and they can only be accessed inside that function. And when that function is over, that uh, finish, that variable is basically gone. External variables can be accessed outside of the function, but not inside of the function. And if you want to access a variable, uh, an external variable to find outside of a function, you use the global uh, keyword. So that's going to be all for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.